The K Sam Wake Up Morning Show. All right, uh, very important information for all of the chocolate lovers out there. There may be a chocolate shortage coming. Whoa. Viruses that don't just target humans uh, that are facing uh, that are attacking chocolate. Yeah, that could be. We could be facing a pandemic right now. That's the chocolate variety. Uh, there's a specific viral disease that's ravaging the cocoa trees in West Africa, where more than half of the world's chocolate originates. Now, this is in Ghana and on the Ivory Coast. So they're calling it the cocoa swollen shoot virus disease, or uh, CSSVD, and it spreads thanks to mealybugs that feed on the trees. Ugh. So once it's infected, the plant exhibits all kinds of symptoms like uh, the swelling of the stems and roots, red veins on the immature leaves, Ew. and the, sh the cocoa pods shrinking. Uh, experts are estimating that this virus is going to cause 15 to 20% of harvest loss in Ghana, which may not seem like a lot, but they've lost already more than 254 million cocoa trees in recent years. Wow. So uh, hopefully they think that there are actually vaccines that they could uh, they, they could use on these plants. So they can inoculate the this. plants. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so they're, 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 they're working on that as hard as they can. But uh, in the meantime, it could create some shortages of the world's chocolate supply. So in other words, if you're really trying to lose weight this summer, you've got a good excuse now. Oh, I don't touch chocolate because of COVID. So there we go. You know? All right. So uh, keep an eye on that. All right. It's John Party and Luke Bryan, Cowboys and Plowboys on KSAM. Carlos with you on the Midday Show, your weather forecast on the way. Ernest and Jordan Davis on the way as well. Well, let's add it up real quick, folks. The time you spend at work, on the couch, and on the toilet. How many hours are you going to spend sitting today? A new study looked at the exact amount of time the average person, person should sit, stand, sleep, and exercise in a typical day. The good news is you should feel free to spend a significant amount of your time in your life kicking back bad news is most of us are well over the ideal number already. Here's the healthiest combo according to, to the results. You can sleep for 8 hours and 20 minutes but as little as 7.5 hours is okay. Sit for 6 hours even 7 might be fine but if you watch a lot of Netflix and have a desk job you're probably over that. And stand for 5 hours and 10 minutes. That's just standing and walking around. It doesn't include time spent exercising. But you should also spend 4 hours and 20 minutes engaged in some level of physical activity. Half should be light activity like walking or doing housework. The other half should be moderate to intense activity, so two hours and ten minutes of actual exercise. See? That's what that's what we ought to do. All right? Let's get on it. It's Martina McBride in a broken wing on 101.7 KSAM, your hometown radio station. I'm Carlos Zimmerman. Welcome to 90s at Noon if you're just dialing in. Your full Southeast Texas weather forecast coming up. Alan Jackson and Sawyer Brown on the way as well. Well, I, I don't really have a food story for you today. I kind of do. It's kind of a... It's, it, I'll let you be the judge of it. But anyway, let's talk about Mother's Day. And for Mother's Day this year, you can ask your mother if she wants to go out to eat. According to a new research, 31% of moms will consider dining out with friends. 21% will consider a date night without the kiddos. And 10% may dine out solo for Mother's Day. Now, regardless of who's going, the restaurants will be packed. According to Open Table, Mother's Day was the number one busiest day for restaurants last year, and the second bus biggest day was the Saturday before Mother's Day. Hmm. May the 4th. Okay, I guess. Uh, by the way, you may want to leave your phone in your pocket. 26% of people said their ideal Mother's Day experience involves no phones or tablets at the table. See, I would argue my mom would do the same thing with me, but she's on her phone anyway. Even if it's not Mother's Day, we'll go out to dinner. Just to get on her phone. I'm not trying to throw my own mom under the bus. Because I do the same thing. My sister does the same thing. My dad would do the same thing if he had a smartphone, but now he's still living in the flip phone age. It's probably better for him anyway. He doesn't need a smartphone. I don't know how he would... I don't know how he would navigate it. Ugh. It's an odd thought to have. Cody Johnson and Dirt Cheap on your hometown radio station. 101.7 KSAM. Good afternoon. I am Big Len Edwards. Your forecast is coming right up. Well, it is World Password Day, and that's when we're supposed to update our passwords and make sure that they are secure. And believe it or not, when I found this stat, I went, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> so listen up. The most common password in the U.S. last year was 123456. Yeah, people are still using that. You've got to be kidding me. And then the uh, second most uh, used password is password, followed by admin, 
and then one, two, three, four, and unknown. And I'm telling you, none of these are secure. Now, a company called Hive Systems puts out a graphic every year that shows how long it would take hackers to crack your password, depending on how long and complex it is. So here's the deal. Uh, even a nine-digit number will only take about six minutes for somebody to crack. But things get a whole lot more secure as you mix in upper and lower case letters, also special symbols like exclamation points. Now, if you add all those things together, along with the numbers, a nine character password would take at least 479 years to crack. Why aren't you doing that? I can tell you right now, I am for every password I have, because I mean, all of our business dealings for my bride and I, they're all online. There's only one place that I have to write a check to every month, but everything else I pay online. And I'm telling you, my passwords, yeah, they are secure because there is a mix of letters, upper and lowercase, and characters. So what are you using? Joe Nichols on 101.7 K Sam playing today's best country and all of your favorites. So Cinco de Mayo is tomorrow, and most people are probably just going to get hammered without even knowing what they're actually celebrating. So <laughs> with that, here are five things you might not know about the holiday. Number five, the top ways that Americans celebrate Cinco de Mayo are eating Mexican food, drinking margaritas of beer, and celebrating Mexican culture, obviously. Number four, it's popular in the U.S., the, the holiday itself, thanks to, in part, beer marketing. In the 1980s, Anheuser-Busch, Miller, and Coors all made a push to spend Cinco de Mayo as a Mexican St. Patrick's Day in order to sell more beer. There you go. Number three, it's not actually that big of a deal in Mexico. May 5th isn't widely celebrated in the country. And Mexican Independence Day is actually in September. The Day of the Dead around Halloween are way bigger holidays in the, the Mexican culture. Number two, Cinco de Mayo celebrates a victory over France. It celebrates Mexico's victory over the over the, the French at the Battle of Puebla in 1862. And with that leads into our final thing that you might not know about Cinco de Mayo. It's not actually celebrating independence, Mexican Independence Day. According to a poll, 60% of Americans don't know why we celebrate Cinco de Mayo, and most think it's Mexican Independence Day, but it's actually not. That's celebrated on September 16th. So there you go. Number two helps the number one with the whole fact that Cinco de Mayo is a victory of a battle from 1862. So, yeah, there you go. Now rolling on here with the number eight song on the top ten countdown. Bailey Zimmerman, where it ends on KSAM.